Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I have a very, very special guest with me, a wonderful young lady, Victoria. Thank you for being here, Victoria. And before I share a little more about you with my viewers, um, I'd like to really say thank you for taking time out to be here. I've attended one of your sessions earlier and I was just blown away. You speak well, you have a lot of um, goodness to share with everyone. And that's why I, um, it's an honor to have you here. Welcome, Victoria. Well, thank you so much for having me. And just by you attending one of my sessions, I just like felt your energy. And when you asked me to speak on your YouTube channel, I was like, yes, I've never done this before, but I'm so excited uh, because it's definitely a passion that I love to talk about. And I'm just really excited to share as much as I know uh, with your audience and with your viewers. Wonderful, wonderful. So viewers, Victoria is here to speak to us about self-care and self-growth and also self-empowerment. I can't wait to hear uh, what she has to say about all of that. But first, let me share a little more um, about her with you. Victoria is an author. She is a world traveler, a podcaster, and a self-care, self-growth um, enthusiast. She loves all that she does. And uh, all of this at just 25 years old. She's really, really young, a wonderful, inspiring young lady. And um, she, her dream is for everyone to be healthy from the inside and out and to go for their dreams no matter how hard they might seem. Um, and she has this no matter what attitude that I absolutely love, but she's also very, very passionate about self-care, self-growth and self-empowerment. Um, so we're going to dive right in. And before that, um, I'd just like to add that I'll put her details in the description box below. Uh, so please feel free to get in touch with her, to know more about her, follow her on Instagram. And this video is going to be a short video, but stay tuned, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to this channel because we'll definitely have more videos like this one coming up. Okay, so we're going to dive right in, Victoria. Um, on your Instagram page, you have many posts about self-care and self-growth. Now, self-care, self-love is something that we hear a lot nowadays. I'd love to know what it means to you. And um, I'd love to know if there's any particular bit of your self-care routine that's most important to you. Oh, those are some really good questions. And thank you for asking me because their self-care and self-growth are getting thrown around a lot, um, which are good things. But I have like a different way of looking at self-growth and self-care. And that kind of made me change in 2021. So January 1st, 2021, uh, I changed my Instagram name to Mindfully Victoria because my name before that was just like Victoria and my last name, which was is Petch. And I was like, this is not serving anyone. This is not bringing value of anyone what can I do to bring my passions through a screen? And I know sometimes it's hard and I don't want you to be plugged into your screens all the time, but I thought by showing more value of like my daily life and what I've been plugging into, it will help a lot more people. So something that I share a lot is self-care. What it means to me is being healthy from the inside and out. And I think a lot of time people think, oh, it's just a face mask. It's enjoying a nice glass of wine after a long day and enjoying a Netflix show. And I believe that is some of it, uh, It's, but it's not all of it. It's something you should do maybe on the days where, you know, you've had a longer day or it was a rough day, but self-care means what are you plugging into? So who are you hanging out with? What podcast are you listening to? What are you telling your mind during those tough or easy situations? And how do you feel from the inside? So do you have migraines? Do you have trouble sleeping? Do you have fatigue? Are you uncomfortable and bloated? So what is your body telling you from the inside? And that is something that you can help work on the outside. So a lot of times people are like, oh, you have such like a nice energy to you. And I was like, yes, it's because I do a lot of work on the inside that people don't know about. And so, yes, I love sharing like masks and self-care, but really it's what are you plugging into? And that will really radiate your energy, your skin, how you feel and how you go about your day. And my probably like favorite self-care part is I'm a morning person. So depending on like your body design, you might be morning, you might be night, you might be afternoon. For me, I love waking up earlier to get my, I call it miracle morning done. And that's to meditate. And when I first started to meditate about 
I don't know, two and a half years ago now, I have a twin sister and we looked over to each other after we meditated for two minutes. Like it wasn't something complicated. It was a two minute beginner meditation session. And my twin sister looked at me and she's like, I want to throw up. Like we were so like hyper, we're like, what do we do next? What can we do next? Uh, how can we inspire other people? And trying to get into the self care, self growth, like routine was very difficult for us, but we didn't give up. And I like to mention too, it can be journaling, it can be cooking, it can be physical activity, but just pick one thing that you enjoy that brings your body the most like happiness. Because when we are born, they don't check our, you know, they don't check our brain waves, they check our heart to see if we're living. So what 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 makes you want to wake up every single day and to keep living? So I guess my top tips, I know I'm speaking a lot, but my top tips uh, for the viewers that you can definitely take away today is have a healthy self-care habit. So it's just like going to the gym. And sometimes we feel, I don't want to go to the gym. Um, I'm too busy, or I just had the worst day. I'm just going to pop some popcorn, have a glass of wine, and I'll be okay. But you need to start rewiring your, bra your brain. Sorry. So when you have an awful day, if you have a negative comment, like, oh, that was such a bad day like my whole day is over, then you already lost the battle because your day is over. But those thoughts are not serving you. So I always say you might look like a crazy person at first, but get comfortable with talking to yourself. Like it does help a lot. And I'm not saying talk to yourself like at the grocery store out loud or when you're walking like downtown in the city like that. That's like a crazy person but talk to your mind like when you think of a negative thought acknowledge it and then just like throw it out and then bring in a positive aspect as well and not to be shy to get into contact with people that you might really learn from so if you ever want information my dms are always open and um i would love to give you some of my tips but if you are more of a um, empath or if you feel more of your emotions then plug into people that serve you so i listen to a lot of gary v trent shelton grant cardone because i'm like I could just hold on to all that information and be like, oh, I'm so excited. But for someone else, they might be like, whoa, no, like this is too much. I can't deal with this. Then plug into like um, Brene Brown or other people that might really inspire you and, and your vibe. So get into a community that inspires you. And then I feel like everything else, like nutrition and mindset will come into place afterwards. That's wonderful. That's like you said, it's truly a different and a a unique way of looking um, at self-care. I absolutely love uh, what you said about it. And what I really, really liked is that you said it's that relationship with yourself um, that you want to build. And um, and I heard one of your, I, I listened to one of your lives yesterday and uh, you said something about self-care not being a selfish act. Um, and that reminded me of what we hear in airplanes. <laughs> Put on your oxygen mask first before attempting to help others, right? You cannot pour from an empty cup. So self-care is about nurturing. It's it's not something that you're, it's not supposed to take away anything from, uh, from you. It doesn't have to be complicated. I love that. It's nurturing, it's empowering. Um, and, and there are very, very small ways that you can do it, but building that habit is what is important. Wonderful. And uh, you know what? It, I was just thinking about this, take care. Um, we say that a lot. It's thrown around a lot and, you know, to end a conversation, take care. And if we were to ask someone, um, do you take care of yourself? The answer would probably be yes, duh. What kind of question is that? But things would get a bit trickier if we added to that. In what ways do you take care of yourself? So that's probably one way that we can, uh, we can kind of analyze that. We can ask that question to ourselves every night. In what ways did I take care of myself? And just build that relationship with ourselves. Lovely. Thank you very much for sharing this. And this brings me to self-empowerment. Um, and I'm, I'm actually very much looking forward to what you have to say about this because it's very self-empowerment or that inner power is very much in line with um, mindfulness practices um, to, to connect um, to that inner source of power instead of looking it on the outside. Um, so what do you have to share about self-empowerment? Yes, that's also something that I love to share as well. And I think when I first 
changed my name to Mindful Victoria or Mindfully Victoria, a lot of people thought I was going to be like this hippie, like, you know, peace and love, um, yoga and like, and it, it, that's not what mindful living is about. That's not what we meditate for. And that's not what self-empowerment and self-empowerment does go greatly with mindful, like mindful living because it's in its name self. So yourself empower. So what are you doing or what are you inspiring to do to empower yourself every single day? So a lot of the time we just overthink things or we're doing things and we, we have other people's opinions or comments or past past failures or past issues come up to the present and those are what breaks our self-empowering structures because we don't feel like we're self-empowering anymore we feel like we're putting our problems on other people or that we might feel too cocky or too confident and I think that's something too that I would love 2021 to start changing or the future to start changing is that if you are confident that's something that should not be that should not just be put and be like, oh, good for her. She likes her body. Okay, let, let's focus on people like other people who may are having a harder time. But if you are self-empowered, that means you are working on yourself every day. And especially with social media and, you know, influencers and likes and followers, what are you doing to inspire people that come onto your feed? Because social media was actually built. And I know I'm talking about social media, but just when you walk on the streets, it's you can see like if someone is walking and like they're happy or smiling and they like say hello to you, which we don't get often. But when I hear someone say hello to me, I was like, wow, they have good energy. Like they know what they're doing. They have like something to show off to the world. And you see some people just like heads down and just like going through the day and not really thinking about who they're interacting with or what their energy is going off. So you have to be self-disciplined when you're trying to be self-empowered or self uh, or empowering others. You need to know what's going on. You need to know your why of why you want to feel like this, why you want to go after this, why you want to become this person. And you need to know that there is an end game. So for me, like I want to empower other people when they come onto my feet or my lives or my reels, I want them to leave that discussion or leave that with like, okay, I can do that too. Like, oh, this is a nugget that I can remember tomorrow when I go into work and someone says something. So you need to be caught up more with the feelings and how you're treating yourself other than how other people are treating you. And I was also listening to a podcast and I refer to podcasts all the time because I listen, I try to listen to two a day and I have a twin sister and she tries to listen to two a day. So we listen to four podcasts a day. So we're just like, we're just throwing information out of each other. Like, every single minute we have. And it says that 40% of our year, we are convincing ourselves that we don't want to do something. So like you, this is, a, I always throw at the gym because, you know, New Year's resolutions, January 1st, gyms are packed pre COVID times and, you know, February, March comes around and it just goes back to that study of like who was already committed to their healthy living before the um, New Year's resolutions. So 40% of the year, year, you're convincing yourself, you're in your mind, trying to do the things that you said you're going to do. So a lot of times people are like, well, I'm not, if I have to keep fighting with myself, if I have to keep getting my energy up, keep doing it, or like, I don't, or I have to force myself to wake up early. I'm not happy to wake up early. They think it's not for them. They think, well, maybe I'm on the wrong path, but remember the universe gives you what they know you deserve. So remember, whatever is coming at you, it's happening for you and not against you. So when you wake up in the morning, or for me, when I wake up in the morning and I have my 5 a.m. workout classes, I haven't once in the last six months since I've started loved waking up at 5 a.m. But I know I have to do it because I know pain is later gained. So I know that I love my body now. I'm figuring out healthy habits but I still don't like waking up, <laughs> but I know that 40% of the year I'm going to struggle, struggling, empowering myself as well. So don't take, don't take, sometimes we are very hard on ourselves. So don't take those comments seriously. Just know, okay, this is what my body is telling me. Let's disregard it because I know once I get into my element, once I'm at the workout, once I'm eating healthier, then I'm like, okay, this is what it's all about. Beautiful. There's so much goodness in what you just said. Um, you spoke about discipline, very, very important. And this is something that, you know, in my childhood, I've, I've heard my parents saying a lot because they were both into sports and sports 
you need to have discipline. There's no way out. And um, what you said about that discomfort is also very, very interesting because you need to learn to lean into your edge. And that's something I, I listened to again yesterday. And I love what you said about listening. Keep, keep learning, keep learning, listen to podcasts, read books. And it's, it's, it's going to help you understand your why better and when your why is strong when you know what your why is what the answer to your why is your will gets much much stronger and that is empowering because then you don't you don't look for resources you become resourceful yourself you have the answers um that that was a very very good and um what, what you said about um, bringing to the table what is special about yourself is really good as well because take responsibility for yourself is what you you meant I think you know you each one of us is special unique uh, so sometimes you need to disengage that you know stressful um, those stressful thoughts and negative thoughts and the most important words you hear sometimes are the words you say to yourself um, so that was really really good thank you very much um, so you're a podcaster and um, you're an author as well. And that's very inspiring. I really look up to people who can write. Uh, I'd love to know more about what you've written or what your podcasts are about. Uh, if you could share a little bit about that. Um, yeah, we'd love to know that. Of course. So our podcast, we started uh, right when quarantine or COVID started. So February last year. So it's been a year now. And it's uh, called Tea with Twins. It's on Spotify. And it just started out of the blue. Vanessa and I, uh, that's my twin sister. We felt being a twin, we go through certain situations or we come into certain situations, sometimes at a disadvantage or we are seen as more, um, a lot of times we feel like we're, People think that as twins, when we show up together, we are not friendly because we have to, we're have we already together and they feel intimidated by us. So it's just little stories that we have gone through. Like we talk about, you know, twins in movies are usually seen as the ditzy or they're seen as more like sexualized. And we have been through those situations and we just want people to know if they are a twin or who are friends with a twin, dating a twin, have come across a twin that just little things that they can say that won't like necessarily offend one right like saying who's smarter who's the prettier one which one are you those things we think like it's all like it's funny but in 25 years into our life like it's it's like I hate to use the word annoying but it gets annoying so it's just if you're if you've ever come into contact with a twin like what to do and we have interviewed mothers we interviewed other twins around the world of their little stories so some of them it's like uh, one was born with um, like a cardiovascular problem so what it was like for one twin taking care of her other twin for the majority of her life due to her disability so it's just things that i think a lot of the times we are fascinated by twins but we don't know what they go through on a daily basis and our book is uh, it, it has it's called what Christmas used to look like so it was uh, it was published in December 2020 so just a few months ago and it's on something that we are truly passionate about which is the environment sustainability healthy living which I love to talk about and mindful it all comes together and it since we are both teachers elementary school teachers it's a book to educate young children on the detrimental effects Christmas has on our environment so it talks about like wrapping paper and how and it gives them tips too so it's not just like you know like this is what you're doing wrong and like pointing the fingers but it's really like what can we do now and that's something that we focused on christmas but we want to focus on other cultures and other holidays around the uh, around the season and also hopefully one day we can release a children's book on affirmations and how children should get into um in a pause environment as soon as possible due to the detrimental effects social media has because i know when i go into my grade six classroom they know things now that i learned in grade 11. so it's kind of like they yes it's great the technology but they also need to be aware of how to use it and how to bring value again at the end of the day wow congratulations on having your own podcast and for your uh, book 2020 so just a few months back exactly that those are wonderful topics. Um, I will definitely be tuning on to tuning into your podcast, and I'll leave the details in the description box below as well for our viewers, so they can um, listen to your podcast as well. 
Right. So um, this brings us to the end of this chat. I, I, I'm sure we can talk a lot more about what we're passionate about, um, but we'll leave that for next time. Um, like I said, we'll have more of these chats. So please stay tuned, follow us on Instagram and um, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, before we leave, do you have anything you'd like to share, Victoria? Any more tips or anything you'd like to share at all? Um, if I had to leave with something is, I guess, just for the next, like, you know, it takes 30 days to create a habit. So think what you're telling yourself for 30 days. If you want to journal, think 30 days, what you are fueling yourself with. So what foods, what nutrition, and for 30 days, have a no matter what attitude and maybe de like message me directly on Instagram and say, okay, I did this for 30 days. I tried this food for three days, I got a better health program or mindset. And this is what I accomplished because we give ourselves a deadline, like, oh, in a year, I'd like to be this, but give yourself a 30 day deadline. And I'm sure no matter where you are, whatever, like you're, whatever you're set up against right now, if it's against a wall or you have a clear path, do something for 30 days. And I would love to hear your success stories um, through Instagram, if you would like to share them with me. Good, good. Um, and this is a wonderful time to start because we're just getting into a new month. Um, so wonderful tips right there. Thank you very much, Victoria. And I look forward to having more chats with you. Uh, thank you again. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in.